Hello, beautiful soul family. Rebecca here, your vibe mentor. And this continues to be the space for conscious purpose driven entrepreneurs who are looking to remove the blocks that hold them back from their purpose so they can manifest abundance through it. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am so excited to be here with you today. So let's talk today about does God hate me? And I know that that sounds very strange, but it was brought to my attention that one of the top three Google searches around God was whether or not God hates me. And I found this to really resonate in my body as a question that I found myself asking. And then on top of that, I had a client recently who also was asking the same thing and it felt important to address. Now in my story, being a pastor's daughter, I like to say a recovering pastor's daughter, it was very difficult to understand why life was so hard. Why, when I was a good person trying to do the right thing, kind, compassionate, empathetic, always pouring my heart into other people, come to find out over giving and people pleasing and lacking boundaries and codependent, but all of those seems to be virtuous. All those things seem to be like, they pointed to my being a good person. And therefore that meant that I should have received some sort of reward or life should have been easier, or there should have been someone to take care of me. Notice all these shoulds. And there was a point in my life where I became angry and frustrated and numb and depressed and anxious come along with that because I felt like the world is hard and people are mean and God hates me or doesn't care about me or one of the two. And I came to a point where I was willing to just write it all off. And there is an interesting journey that can happen when you start in religion and consciously choose to walk away from it, then discover metaphysics and realize through that process, that source, divine creator, universe, all of these things that are deemed as somehow a higher authority, right? Even the higher self, what we realize is it brings it back to ultimately at the end of the day, whether you call it God or creator or source, we're looking for or seeking the same thing. And I identify as a seeker. Um, some, some might say light worker. I'm not really sure about all of the galactic stuff. It really doesn't matter to me because I think what's most important for me is a relationship with my creator. And what I learned through all of that was that our source, just like a good parent had to allow us to learn how to find our own way without holding our hand or doing it for us. Now I'm also a parent, so I can see that in those moments when my child was learning how to walk, if I rushed in there and picked them up and held their hand every time they tried to walk, they wouldn't be able to walk. And I know that that seems oversimplified. It doesn't really explain why is life so difficult? Why does it have to be so hard? And my, my clarity around that in asking God, creator, source, divine universe for answers is that we've been given the answers many, many times, but it's been hidden from us. And when we are in stillness, we can hear the answers, but we live in a culture and a society of hypervigilance and trauma responses that has taught us ways that keep us from hearing the answers. And so the reason life has been difficult is because we didn't understand how to drive this fancy sports car known as our mind and our body the way they were intended to. We were not taught how to process emotions. We weren't taught what a trauma response was. It was considered normal to be raised in the way that creates trauma. And certainly the big T word, you know, can be prohibitive for some people because we feel like, well, that's just normal upbringing. That's not trauma. Well, it doesn't really matter what you call it. At the end of the day, you can call it conditioning and programming. Oddly enough, at the end of the day, trauma healing is actually what moves the needle and helps us to move forward in our life. And so this 
question of why does God hate me? Or in another way, what I hear in that is, have I been forgotten? Am I being punished? Am I somehow an exception to the rule? And the reason that life can feel so hard and bring us to a place of asking this question is because we weren't taught how to drive the fancy sports car. We weren't given the rules of the game called life. And so when we are a good person and we're overgiving and we're people pleasing and we're codependent and we're lacking boundaries, it's coming from a place of wounding because somewhere in our early formative years, we received the message, I'm not enough, or there's something wrong with me. And therefore who I am is a problem and what I need is a problem. And so we don't realize that subconsciously, this is our subconscious program. We are constantly trying to outrun this fear of not being enough or to disprove to ourselves that we are worthy through overgiving, people-pleasing, codependency, self-sacrifice, self-abandonment, lack of boundaries. <laughs> the list goes on and on. The trauma responses are uh, abundant. <laughs> And these are the things that cause us to experience more pain. The infinite wisdom of our creator designed a system that will draw to us the things that we need to see, the things we need to heal, the things we need to learn more about. And so in my experience, in the overgiving and love relationships, I would do everything for that person. I would pour into them. I am a natural lover. I am a natural nurturer. And I love to pour into people, but I would do that without boundaries. I would accept a one-sided relationship. I didn't stand up for and ask for what I needed. I couldn't even express how I felt. And so while it's harsh to say I deserved that, I don't, I don't want to say I deserved that. I needed that. I needed that to come to the place of recognizing I'm not doing it the right way. I've given away my power and authority and I have allowed myself to be degraded and diminished and even suppressed. Again, I suppressed myself. I want to be clear on that because I didn't understand how to play the game called life. I didn't understand that that message that I received as a child that I was bad, wrong, and broken was what was causing me to overgive in an effort to seek for validation, to, to seek approval, to seek evidence that that thing that I feared most, that toxic belief, that trauma that lived in my subconscious brain, I was trying to run from it. I was trying to prove that it wasn't true. And of course, because we are creators, just like our creator, we are creating all the time. As within, so without. The story in the Bible of the woman who healed, who was healed because she touched the, the garment of Christ was because her belief, he, he turned to her and he said, woman, your belief has healed you. So the experiences that we keep experiencing, the harsh reality that we think life has to be is coming to us because of our beliefs because of our trauma, because of our conditioning, because of our programming, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't matter. Don't let those semantics get in the way. And shifting and changing our beliefs is more complex than just writing out the opposite belief. Yes, affirmations work. Yes, neural pathway reprogramming requires writing out the opposite belief for 90 plus days or more. But at the end of the day, the conditioning, the programming, the trauma, however you want to call it, lives in the body. And we cannot heal from the level of the mind in which the problem was created, as Einstein says. We have to heal in the body. And this is why the trauma spotting work that I do, that I created, that source gave to me to give to you, this is why it works. Somatic healing therapy paired with the divine healing energy that is gifted to us and we have a responsibility to learn how to use is in our body. And so why are you experiencing a hard life? 
Why do you feel like God doesn't like you or hates you or is punishing you? Because you haven't learned how to play the game called life. And this is what a loving parent has to do is in those moments of stepping back and watching your child fall, watching your child hurt, especially in those teenage years where you have to watch them make mistake after mistake after mistake, because telling them does not do anything. They have to experience it. They have to learn it. This is how we embody it is by living it. And so, yeah, we stumble and we skin our knee and we hurt a lot and we come to a breaking point where enough is enough is enough. And we finally take our power back and say, damn it, I am done. Something has got to shift and change. And that's the moment when you start asking the questions that are going to bring the answers that will show you where and how to heal. When we think we've got it all figured out and we're carrying the weight of the world on our shoulders and we're hustling and grinding and we're going to make it happen. And that's great. Good for you. Effort is good. Action is good to some degree, but it can't be everything. It has to be a co-creative relationship. In fact, I don't think you're even asked to do 50%. I think the divine wants to do the heavy lifting. Your creator has told you, believe, ask, and receive. That's your job. So do the inner work, the physically in your body work that will reprogram the subconscious brain, remove the beliefs that continue to draw to you and manifest more of the same. Because again, in its infinite wisdom, this system was designed to be a mirror to show you, to reflect to you, Hey, you, you believe that you have to overgive to people to prove your value and worth here. Let me send you another user, someone else who will take advantage and show you how that doesn't work. You want to be a perfectionist. You want to try to do everything perfectly, improve, or try to outrun your imperfection. Go ahead. It'll hurt. But source, divine creator, God will be there for you when you're ready to come back and say, okay. I can't do it on my own. I'm not broken, but I'm incomplete without you. And that's when you give it to the divine. The weight is lifted from your shoulders. That's the peace that passes all understanding. It's not up to you to do, to give, to effort, to try, to struggle. It's up to you to believe Believe that you can have good things. Believe that life is not supposed to be hard. Believe that life doesn't have to be hard all the time. Believe that you will be rewarded according to his riches and glory. What does that mean? The heavens and the earth, that's everything. There's nothing that will be held from you when you believe and live and embody that belief, right? We have to remove the beliefs out of the body. It's not just in the brain. The trauma's in the body. The body keeps the score. Plenty of scientific evidence behind all of this. That's why I offer free 30-minute sessions. If you need help with this, I would love to help you. If anybody has ever come to a place where they feel like God hates you, I just, I'm astounded that that is the top number three search as it relates to God. Because this world seems difficult. This world seems hard. It seems like we're in a prison right now, the debt and slavery prison, even though God gave us dominion over the earth, we have complete sovereignty. We are asked, we are not only gifted power and authority and creative abilities, we are asked, that is what we are here for, is to learn how to use the power, the authority, the sovereignty, the creative abilities we were given. But it all starts with being open to believing. God loves me. The universe is always conspiring in my favor. I am a creator just like my creator. I am divine. I am my creator's favorite. I deserve 
and will have, you have to have that belief. I can and will have a beautiful, flowing, fulfilling life of service and joy and bliss and ease. When I step into my purpose, when I step into following the guidance of the divine, when I heal my trauma, remove it from my body, when I can actually listen and be still, you will be provided for. The trees don't struggle or search for food or water, nor do the birds, and you are loved more than they. People tend to pit these two camps against each other, religion or science, religion or science, right? And I don't really put spirituality in religion. You know, there's just a lot of baggage that comes with the misuse and abuse of power. And yet we want to be careful not to throw the baby out with the bathwater. And so it's not religion versus science. It can be source and all that was created unified with science. There is evidence, right? The Schrodinger's cat, the atom shifts and changes as it's observed, right? You're in psychology, your beliefs create your reality. You will you will see what you perceive, right? Cognitive um, dissonance, right? Ignoring and, and looking away from the things we don't want to see, pretending they're not there. You're going to get, keep getting smacked in the face by those things that are trying to show you, hey, you cannot ignore me. You have to heal me. Confirmation bias. You always find evidence of the thing that you believe because that's the way the system was put up. You want to believe that thing? Go ahead. You will create it. You will see evidence of it. We have siloed our education system. So we've got the silo of silence and the, the silo of religion and the silo of psychology and the silo of biology and the silo, silo of neuro neurobiology, all of these which, all of these things I have a massive passion for and can't help but study on my own for fun every day. They, they unify, they come together. They are the key components in learning how to drive your fancy sports car. That is your mind and body. They are the instruction manuals on how to live the game called life. It's unfortunate that people who have misused and abused the authority of the church have somehow gotten us to write off God and the Bible when there is very valuable information in there that can prevent suffering, not only prevent your suffering, but lead you to a happy and healthy and fulfilling life. And it's time that we start to bring things together. And I'm covered in goosebumps because my name, Rebecca, means to bind or to bring together. So this is my gift to you. If you feel like God hates you, or you struggle with a difficult life, or you can't figure out how to make the pain stop, I want you to know I feel you. <laughs> I'm really sensitive and I'm, I'm almost feeling your emotion right now. I want you to know that it can get easier. Not it can, it will. It does when you learn how to shift and change things the proper way. Someday I will write a book called How to Live or How to Play the Game Called Life. But for now, I offer free 30 minute healing sessions. I would love to connect with you help you understand that trauma healing works for conditioning and programming and any other challenge in your life. It is just leveraging the healing, natural healing capacity of the body and the creator's divine, beautiful, loving healing energy that courses through your body every day. Combined with the compassionate witness of myself and many other techniques, uh, I do offer free 30 minute sessions. So check out the link below. Otherwise, please know God does not hate you. You are very, very loved by so many, including me. I love you, my friends. We'll talk soon. Take care. Namaste.